Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Redo it. The Business Lab. Welcome, Rina, to Dewi Voices, Hi. a segment of SMCCI The Business Lab. Before we start today, we want to say thank you to all our amazing sponsors, Craft by Tree, for the venue and our media sponsors, Studio 5 Corp. So, Rina, Hi. I've been hearing about you and your business, Vinpao, right? So, but what I hear is that you transitioned from, uh, from the banking world to the baking world. You know, you just, just removed it. one letter from there and then you <laughs> went to a set. 360 degrees uh, worth, world of change, right? Mm -hmm. Can you just give our listeners a glimpse of your transition and what inspired the shift from the banking world to the baking world? Okay, yeah. Um, I guess uh, the transition itself, the, the decision to actually leave the corporate ladder, uh, the banking industry, was uh, primarily due to the birth of my um, youngest son. And uh, having had two previous kids before, um, I missed out on a lot of their milestones and all mm. that. And they were raised primarily by uh, my helper. So I wanted to have the opportunity to raise this one almost single-handedly. Mm -hmm. So And that's what I did. So that was uh, the decision-making uh, factor for me. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, prior to that, uh, even before... Um, I decided to leave the banking industry. I am already uh, taking in orders for my cookies and bakes. So it was, a, I guess, a natural transition for me mm. to eventually leave it. Yeah. Was there like any pushback from, you know, your loved ones? Maybe was there any obstacles on your side? Was Definitely. There? Having like typical Asian mom, um, she... She was the first, she was the last that I informed actually because yeah, I was scared to tell her that I'm leaving because I, I could already like, you know, uh, play it in my mind uh -huh. what she's going to say. And yes, the day that she found out, uh -huh. she said exactly word by word, are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're already making this um, sum of money. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's stable every month that you're already uh, bringing in and you have three kids. Um, again, are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but then I assured her, yes, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, let me have a chance to raise uh, my youngest son first. Mm -hmm. And then, well, if anything fails, then okay, I'll look for another job then, you know. It is what it is. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but you said your mom found out. Did you tell yeah. her or did she find out? It's a bit of both actually. Because okay. uh, I remember on my last day of work, I posted a selfie. Uh -huh. I posted on IG, like something like final day uh -huh. and dot, dot, dot. Okay. So she saw that that post. Mm -hmm. And then what do you mean by <laughs> final day? And I was like, oops. Oh, okay, so even at like, how old were you when you left your job? Um, I was in my mid-30s. And you're still scared of your mom. Oh my god, that never yeah. stops. Right? <laughs> Being scared of your mom is a never-ending thing. Alright. Not, not really scared, like, it's more of like, you're scared of disappointing her, is that? Yes, is that yes, it? yeah. Okay. I think yeah. I think being an Asian kid, we all have that. I mean, we respect our parents, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, but and also like we always have this um desire, desire to, please them. to to meet like, yeah, whatever yeah. expectations expectations they have of us. Yeah, of course, of course. So all yes, right. <laughs> cool. And it's not easy, I guess, right? No. Um, yeah, at that time, you have three kids, and then doing all that transition. Mm. Um, I guess. Now that we are very with social media and everything, we are very exposed to the idea of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, right. and mm -hmm. more and more younger people are actually taking up the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journey. So, I would say many people are actually dreaming of making a career out of uh, making a career change. Okay, but it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. Can you share some pivotal moments or challenges that you face during your transition from banking to becoming a baker? Of course, uh, my constant worry will be. Um, how do I get people to uh, know, come to know about my cookies, my mm -hmm. bakes, uh, vein pao, and how do I get more? How do I make it more consistent? So this uh, were always uh, playing in my mind back then. It still is right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> honestly. Um, but 
of course, and again, those are also the motivating factors for me to, okay, let's try this, try that, um, the different forms of um, social media. Mm -hmm. And right now we have the e-commerce platforms. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, you just have to have that um, never die, never say die spirit mm -hmm. to just, let's just try. You, you wouldn't know unless you try. So, yeah. Okay. You sound so passionate about your 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 cookies and your yes. bakes and everything. How do you actually get started? You know, like what sparked that interest in you to actually um, start baking and mm. eventually make it into something that you want to do full time that you want to mm. feed or provide your family with? Yeah. Mm. Well, um, my parents uh, previously ran their own catering business, mm -hmm. so I've seen the struggles. Uh, which actually acts as uh, motivating uh, rather than uh, a deterrent for me to uh, run my own business as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the fact that um, I want to have an income on my own, mm -hmm. um, leading something on my own instead of um, uh, uh, running on um, salary. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, um, some of the things that happen um, and I wanted to be different um, like how I make myself different is that, uh, of course, cookies. Everyone can bake cookies, mm -hmm. and of course, the the passion uh, that comes along due to the fact that almost every year, year in year out, um, during high raya period, that's when I would be more than happy to help my mom, um, bake her kueh tart, her magmo. You were happy to do this. I, I feel like I was forced into this child labor. Yeah, thing well, <laughs> initially it's forced, but then, you know, um, I still don't make uh, tarts and mm -hmm. makmo as well as my mom. And uh -huh. so I, I refuse to bake that. Mm -hmm. So I'm comfortable with just cookies because they are more like, you know, like you can just like, yeah, you know, you don't have, they don't have to look a certain way yeah. because my mom is still the traditional, like, you know. Yeah, oh my yeah. God, my mom does that too. Yeah, so... I can, yeah. It's like a traumatic event for me. So, baking and baking, that's two very separate worlds. But do you think there's anything in common between these two worlds where you feel like your um, meticulous banking skills actually plays a, a important role in your journey as an entrepreneur in the baking world? Um, okay, I was actually a trainer in the bank. So, um, I trained the new... Uh, customer service offices mm -hmm. um, in the soft skills and also the um, the knowledge um, and so therefore I use that to my advantage mm -hmm. when it comes to servicing my own uh, um, customers for Vinpao so uh, whenever I receive um, I won't say bad feedback that I, to me there's never bad feedback feedback is just something for me to improve on. Uh -huh. So I always do um, a separate with a smile. Say thank you for okay. um, saying whatever that you, know, you have to say about my bakes. Okay. Uh, make sure to improve next time and I hope to see you again. Right. Yeah. So for you, you don't believe there's bad feedbacks. All feedbacks are something that you can improve on. Yeah, because taste, I guess, is subjective. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And um, do you feel like as a business owner that like mm. you always have to satisfy a customer. Is that something that you believe in that the customers are always right? I have this problem. Um, it's hard for me to say no uh, whenever a customer places their order. Mm -hmm. So sometimes even when it's two last minute, unless uh, there's really, really emergency, I, I cannot then. Uh, I will, again, I will not say no, mm -hmm. but I will recommend my other friends who can okay. bake. Uh, but if they insist, I've done this, uh, I received this order once. Um, she was due to fly to Dubai the mm -hmm. next night and she really wanted my meringue. Mm -hmm. And um, she's also pregnant. Okay. Aww. How do I say no to <laughs> that? Yeah. So, okay. So, I forgo my sleep. I'll, I bake for her like two tubs of meringue. Mm -hmm. So, she's happy. Oh. So, her, her kids have um, been Pauk's DNA. It's so. really the extra, <laughs> extra miles, extra yeah. miles of the visa. Yes. <laughs> Alright. So, um, I guess because of that, um, I'm sure like being awarded the 10 most inspiring home-based women premiers by SMCCI mm. is a remarkable achievement for you. So can you just tell us how this recognition impacted your business and your role within SMCCI? Oh, um, winning that award um, has been a humbling factor, although I, I still don't think I deserve it <laughs> because I think there are other more deserving business owners. Mm -hmm. But Alhamdulillah, I, I received it. And again, I use that 
um, as a motivating motivating factor for me to keep on improving. Mm-hmm. And also that's how I guess I started my foray into volunteering with uh, SMCCI, uh, with Dewi uh, specifically, because um, it is with uh, Dewi SMCCI that I get to know a lot more other businesses. Mm. I get to learn a lot more from other kinds of business owner, regardless of whatever business they are doing. Yeah, that's how I know you, right? Yes. From Dewi. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I guess your involvement with SMCCI over the years has grown yes. and you're currently serving as the Honorary Secretary for Dewi. Yes. Um, how has being part of the SMCCI community mm-hmm. contributed to your business growth and personal development? Um, of course, uh, being with SMCCI, uh, they have helped me a lot in terms of um, making me learn new things. Mm-hmm. Like there are certain things that some regulations that I wasn't aware before. Mm-hmm. Um, the basic ones maybe, but um, sometimes, you know, like the governmental um, boundaries, the red tapes and mm-hmm. all that. So I've become more aware. Mm-hmm. And also there's a lot more advice that I learned from the other business owners, regardless of their um, industry. industry. Okay. Yeah. I would, you would say that ever since joining SMC, mm-hmm. SCCI, your business has flourished and mm-hmm. you become a better business owner and also a better uh, entrepreneur, you would say yes. that? I have become more aware mm-hmm. of uh, the direction that I want to take. my business to go ahead. And so, um, I, and I know that I don't want to stick to just baking. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, hopefully in time to come, I will venture into something else. That's why the name uh, is Van Pao, because I do not want to stick to baking, just mm-hmm. baking. Okay. Yeah, there are other uh, kinds of business, businesses that I eventually would like to go okay. into. Is mm. it stressful? Like, be, being where you are, and like, is it stressful being like a mom and then being a entrepreneur managing your own business and then spending all that time volunteering with you know SMCCI uh, do you find it stressful yes <laughs> definitely i think with stressful is an underrated work um mm-hmm. but it's it's a good it's a good stress i think uh, a lot of business person out there they thrive in stress yeah I think that makes <laughs> you just like think out of the box okay uh, we have this problem. How do we uh, work on it? And you also tap on uh, the network that you have. Okay, I, you, you you become less shy mm-hmm. to voice out your problems. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much of the money. Okay, I need money. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, not so much of that. But in terms of uh, giving ideas, sharing ideas. And I realize that the business owners uh, that I've got to know uh, from SMCI, they are never shy um, to share their knowledge. And mm-hmm. that's a good thing. And I think that's what we need in mm-hmm. the community. Oh, okay. Mm. So you're saying that you stress is a good thing, but and you're, you're stressed. By mm. Is there any stress-busting techniques from your banking days that you mm. think you still swear by as a baker? We can all use a tip, you know, like some tips to you know, manage your <laughs> stress effectively. Uh, okay. I ran. Um, well, I had an injury, so I don't uh, run, but I do a lot of brisk walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I like to do those things alone. Yeah, yeah I cannot like run with a friend mm-hmm. or in a group. Okay. I'm always like, that's why I guess when I'm running, that's where my, my thoughts are also running and then clearing space. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that sometimes I find... Um, New ideas during my runs, yeah. Oh, awesome. Mm. Speaking of like, um, you know, running and stress, uh, like different different platform. You mm. know, some people have different platform of busting their stress. You know, some people like to go exercise mm. uh, with friends. Some people mm. like to exercise uh, on their own. So these are all like different different platforms of how they can manage their stress. Mm-hmm. S- and based on that like with different platform do you also have different platforms where you have expanded your business to you know um are you currently using like grab food or shopee oh um yeah uh right now of course with social media mm-hmm. um I do try to tap on uh, the e-commerce platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, my bigs are actually on Lazada, mm-hmm. Shopee, TikTok, uh, Halal Food Hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And yeah, these are the main ones that I have. How has uh, leveraging this platform actually helped you in reaching a wider audience? And 
What advice would you give to others looking to explore such avenues? Mm. Uh, the reason why I choose to uh, showcase my products into all these platforms mm-hmm. is because I want to go beyond the Malay Muslim community mm-hmm. that um, uh, a lot of the non-Malays or non-Muslim communities that they can actually um, have a taste into my bakes because my bakes, uh, yeah, they are cookies but what goes into the cookies? Uh, most of the ingredients that I use are organic products because I'm not exactly a health freak. I do enjoy the occasional ice cream mm-hmm. and desserts and all that. Um, but I also would like to uh, ask the community and everyone mm-hmm. as a whole to look after ourselves, mm-hmm. um, be more aware of what we put in our mouth. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I choose uh, more organic products. Mm. Mm. Okay. So this, um, I guess you are putting healthier products yes. because you're checking out the market trends mm. and you're looking at consumer behavior. Yes. Do you think your banking background must have given you this uh, some valuable insight into this? Um, of course. Um, when it comes to managing the finances, mm-hmm. um, how much I spend and how much to charge my cookies or bakes, um, all that has come in handy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... Just because uh, we change our trade does not mean that the previous experience um, is of no use at all. There's mm-hmm. always something that you learned previously that mm-hmm. is an experience you can tap on for um, the future. So mm. uh, in your previous uh, industry, do you learn a bit of like um, digital marketing from your previous job? Um, not so much actually. Not so much, okay. Yeah, because when I left, um, it was just... Facebook and yeah, only um, Instagram was just uh, growing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, have I made myself sound old? No, I hope no. <laughs> <laughs> no but, well, what do you think about like how how do you you know market your products to mm. people now? Like, do you take up digital marketing or do you go traditional marketing? What what what's your options when it comes to marketing of your products these days? Um, this is is uh, mainly through um social media ads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and still, uh, actually, my my uh, returning customers they are always like coming back, and they, traditional um, marketing works still works actually. Mm-hmm. So they are always referring mm-hmm. uh, customers and all that. And there was one time when I was making delivery, um, I realized that they are all from the same block. Oh. so I think oh um, yeah. So when I say hey, I was just sending it downstairs. Oh yeah, she's the one who uh, recommended me your cookies. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, so they yeah. must have given each other like oh, perhaps yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably like they were like exchanging all the same cookies like okay <laughs> we're all like exchanging all the same kind of cookies yeah oh, oh. Mm. they must feel nice right like yes, you know, one from one customer you end up having extra 10 more customers yes. like just by the word of mouth mm. you don't actually have to put in too much effort trying to find new customers Correct. because your product is so good people are doing it for you mm. for free you know yes. so Rina you have taken us on such a fascinating journey from the boardroom mm. to the kitchen um, as a final sprinkle of wisdom, mm. what advice do you have for fellow corporate warriors eyeing a delicious entrepreneurial venture? I guess just just do it. Like, don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever fear you have, uh, use that to mod- motivate yourself. Mm. Yeah, and just take whatever um, critics that come by your way uh, to positive uh, thinking and yeah, just use that to spur you on further. So literally, mm. go je, don't scare. Just go, okay. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Rina, for okay. um for spending uh, the time with us. My you know, pleasure. Sharing with us about your entrepreneur journey. Mm. And it was really amazing getting to know more about you mm. and how you do the things that you do. Mm. So uh, thank you so much to our wonderful studio sponsor, Craft by Tree, and our media sponsor, Studio 5.4. Last but not least, thank you to all our viewers and listeners for tuning in to Daily Voices, a segment of SMCCI The Business Lab. Till the next one, bye!